In this video, I'm going to show you how to take that Google Form data set and get it into SPSS so you can run your analysis. So we're going to go to that data set. So here we are at that data set. And what I want to do is I want to highlight everything but that first row. That first row will have to come in and put that information in separately. So I'm going to highlight everything that I have here. I've highlighted it all and I'm going to control C to copy or alternatively you can go here and copy there. Then I'm going to go back to my new data set that I have opened up in SPSS and I'm going to hit control V and everything will copy in. Alternatively, you can go up here and it will, uh, if, if you haven't pasted it already, this paste will be active and you'll be able to paste it there. Now I need to go in and name these different columns so I know what they are. So here you see we're in data view down here in the bottom left hand corner. When I go to variable view, that will allow me to rename them. So I can either click on variable view or if you double click the column you're interested in, it takes you there automatically. So I know that first column is my participant number. I know that second column is my condition. Now the third column was those questions. So I'm going to go back here to my data set. I'm going to click on that third column and I'm going to highlight that question. And then I want to figure out what I want to name this column uh, short name. So I'm going to say companionship and I'm going to copy this question. I'm going to go back to my SPSS data set and here I'm going to name that third one companionship. But in the label I want to put that question in there so I have that for future reference. Okay so I just control V and it copied and pasted. Now I need to find out and yours is going to be a little different depending on again what kind of you know questions you asked how those types of things so it just kind of this is this is for this short experiment that you guys did so I copy that that's how often do you feel left out go back to my SPSS spreadsheet control V Oops. there we go I'll say left out and I go back here Third question, how often do you feel isolated from others? I copy it, or I highlight it, control C, go back to my spreadsheet. I want it to look like this in order to paste it. So I'm gonna say isolated. And then I know that next one is gonna be my average, right? So it's the average of those three questions. If I wanted to be make it a longer label, I could do that. Um, the other thing that you want to do is give it a value. So if I click on this, because it's a Likert scale, remember we're going to say that it's an interval level of measurement. We want to know what those levels of measurement mean. So I'm going to click these three dots and I, one, if I go back to my experiment, I'll know that that says never. And I'm gonna add. And then I know five was very often. Now, since I took this experiment from someplace else and we did it quite a while ago, I kind of realized that maybe these aren't the best descriptors um, or anchors for, my, for a, a Likert scale, but it's what they gave me. So two, I'm gonna say um, maybe sometimes. So three, we'll say, is occasionally. And four, we'll say, frequently. And then if I go back to my data set, just to remind me that um, those last two columns were biological sex and age. So we'll say sex, 
and age. Now the question is this type. Do we want it to be numeric? All sorts of different choices here, right? Um, for you, for the most part, you're probably going to go with numeric or string. So numeric means that you have a number. You can tell it how, long, how many digits that number could be, how many decimal places. Um, and then string would be words. And so these look like they're all labeled appropriately. Sex is labeled as a string because we have it written as male and female. And then it has correctly labeled it as nominal, which is, remember, that level of measurement, which is categorical. And male and female is definitely categorical. So now we need to know what these other measurements are. And some of them don't matter because we're not going to use them in our experiment. But participant number could be scale, which means it's an interval or racial scale. Condition, definitely um, scale, even though it is kind of, you know, it's categorical in one way. Actually, I guess it is categorical, so that, that we, can, we can name that nominal. Um, these th all of these questions and the average, those are all on a scale. because they're all that interval level of measurement. Because remember, we said that Likert scales, when we're talking about in terms of psychology, Likert scales are considered that interval level of measurement. And so it's on that scale so that we can um, use the calculations that we want to in SPSS. So let me go back to our data view. And our data is pretty much set up. Now, again, you may have more or less to do. It just depends. So you want to make sure the important thing is that these are um, labeled as the correct type of level of measurement. You won't be able to run an ANOVA if your dependent variable here, our dependent variable's average, is not in that scale type of measurement. So I only have two conditions. If you look here, you can see my ones and my twos. Oops. You can see my ones and my twos, right? I only have here twos and ones. You should have a third set down below, at least, right? Almost all of you have three levels to your independent variable. Because of that, you have to do an ANOVA. Now, I don't have to because I, have a, I only have two levels, but I'm going to show you how to real quickly just to remind you how to run. We go to Analyze. We go to Compare Means. We go to One Way ANOVA. And our dependent list, that's the dependent variable, that is going to be our average my factor is my condition, and maybe you have it labeled differently. I want automatically run post hoc test, but keep in mind, if you don't get overall significance, you don't have to talk about that in your results section. I'm going to run that two key test. Oops, I don't know what happened there. So we ran it, we did our post talk. I'm going to go to options. I want descriptive statistics. And then I'm going to click continue. I think everything is set up correctly. I'm going to click OK. And then I get my output. So with the descriptives, here you're going to have a column that's the mean for each of my conditions. And something else you might want to do that I didn't, I just thought of is under conditions, when we go to our variable view, you could label that, right? You could label that as, so one thing that you might wanna do that I had forgotten to do was go here to your condition and you wanna label those conditions. So give, assign it a value. So we click on the value, we click those three dots and one was our hot condition and two was our cold condition. So now that we do that, if you look here and we go to our output, you see that it just says one or two. But now if I go back up here and let's reanalyze it, one way ANOVA, everything should already be clicked the same, just if you need to change something. And I do it again, now it tells me those. And so it's much easier to read the data. Sorry, I'd forgotten about that before. 
So here I get my means, I get the standard deviation and standard error that you may want to present or you need to present. So standard error should be on your, your graph, your bar graph. Standard deviation could be in the text or you could also use standard error. Um, you may want to present the n in each group, the number in each group. Um, sometimes you'll see this confidence interval and minimum and maximum being presented now in data. We're not going to go through that since it's an intro to experimental methods. Then you're going to come down to your ANOVA table and you're going to look at your significance. Okay, So remember this is a significance. If it's less than 0.05, it's significant. This is 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is much greater than 0 0.05. Thus, it is not significant. This is my F value. These are my degrees of freedom um, that would be reported. Again, because I only have two conditions, we wouldn't necessarily have to run an ANOVA. And then it's also going to have, oh, it didn't run the Tukey post hoc test because I only have two groups, so there's nothing to compare. So yours will below will have the two key post hoc test. But of course, if your significance in the ANOVA table is not less than 0.05, you don't need to talk about the two key test. Okay. So again, you're going to present the means and the standard deviation or standard error in the text, in the results section text, as well as um, you need to present a table and a bar graph. So you can present this information or you can present other information, but it's not this table. You're not taking this table and copying it. You're making an APA formatted table and an APA formatted bar graph. You'll need to do the bar graph in Excel or Google Sheets, and you'll need to do the table in Google Sheets, Word, um, Google Docs will work, and I've provided you those instructions elsewhere.